don't know, I just kind of feel like the human race is a bit of an alien species living on its own planet. Uh, or like, actually, like, like we're robots. I wanted to start changing that. Yeah. So I can then leave those um, skills and that knowledge to my kids. So when my kids are old enough, you know, they go camping and, and, and start joining the workforce and they're young adults. They have this different perspective of the world, one that's more holistic. Um, and yeah, I mean, something that our ancestors, you know, we, that they, they had to do, or that we, we wouldn't be standing here yeah. right now, you know. It's we, like the smarter we get, the more stupid yeah. we become. <laughs> so true. <laughs> is how can we interact with the land and all its inhabitants in a safe, sustainable and respectful way. If we can't do that to the highest degree, then we shouldn't be doing this in my opinion. So get as close as you can be to 100% certain of what the plan is, get your ID right. When in doubt, go without. Got any doubt in your mind? Oh, oh. Now they say anything's edible once, guys. Here's a good example of not only a bioaccumulator, not only a bioaccumulator, but it's a hyperaccumulator. It does it with a vengeance. So it draws up all the nasties out of the ground and stores them in its tissues. Well, we can take the Miyoti approach, and that's minimal impact on the environment. The more of the introduced flora and fauna that we take out, the more it benefits the native flora and fauna. We need to make sure that we're not taking away food, medicine, um, cultural plants, educational plants that traditional custodians or other Aboriginal people might be might be using for their educational purposes, for their kids, for cultural reasons. Got to Jake's campsite, did some stuff in the morning. Man, I think we probably already covered off about 15 plants or something, so it was really good. And um, yeah, fair enough, he doesn't want too much filming of the stuff he's doing, which I totally appreciate and agree with. So I'll kind of intermingle in some shots from some of the different things, but I'm gonna leave obviously most of that knowledge to him and you guys are welcome to check out his stuff, but I'll kind of flash in a few things from Jake, just so you get a sense of what the course is like. Um, anyway, geez, I'll tell you what, it's hot today. It is so hot today. Um, so bikes here, I'm gonna set up probably between these two tents. So a big change I made from the last couple trips is I always went with that tent and uh, what else did I do? I had a, like a pretty thick foam mattress and then sleeping bag and um yeah so what i think the big change i've done this is the first time i'm using it is i've got just a tarp now so it's a dd tarp it's a good size tarp i've got the tarp and then i've got a what's called i think a jungle bivy bag and so the bivy jet bag is minimalist i'm going to put that under the tarp and then i've got instead of the big foam mattress or like um yeah foam mattress that i have at, i've had i've got like a three-quarter mattress and so your feet hang off but it's much much smaller it's like you know, probably 30% uh, of what the other one was. So I've been able to reduce the weight by about a kilo and a half, I think, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's considerable. And the 
the difference in all of the stuff I'm taking is like way less stuff. Um, you'll see like, well, I'll, I'll do a little side by side comparison and I'll flash that up there at some point. But the, the bulk of the first kit versus the bulk of this kit cannot be understated. So anyway, I'm gonna give this a try. Don't have a ton of experience obviously using this gear. Again, it's my first time, but I'm gonna set it up. I'm gonna see how we go. So we're just on a very short lunch break. There's a little swimming hole that he's got in the back for people to cool off. And then we're gonna sort of grab lunch and then head over for a bit of a, a tent talk. And then we're gonna go on to round two of looking at some of these medic medicinal and edible plants. But man, the amount of knowledge and I think the confidence just in seeing someone, you know, you might have seen a picture of it, but in seeing someone put you to show you that plant, point that plant out, pull out a leaf and hand it to you and say, yeah, this one, you know, is good to eat or this is how you would eat it or how you would use it. Man, it's worth its weight in gold. So anyway, but to tell you what, it is bloody hot. What is this? This is mid Jan and uh, we are about an hour north of the blue, no, not blue, uh, about an hour north of Sydney. So anyway, man, it's warm, but yeah, it's cool. So looking forward to round two. Anyway, here we go. The thing I was just thinking, you know, with this tarp, uh, I didn't, it comes with a couple of pegs. I didn't bring the pegs. So the idea is use the bushcraft knife, carve up a couple of pegs, peg it into the ground. So again, I'm getting pretty, um, you know, woodsy, so to speak with what we're doing. Anyway, we'll have a look. So buff if I do this all the time. Like you can already feel massive, <laughs> massive shoulders. Uh, this one's good on the corner. Nice. Bring the fire, bring the fire, bring the fire right now. It's getting bring there. Bring the fire, fire side. Well, there, there's <laughs> hard work. <laughs> Come on, you gotta keep it going. You gotta keep it going now. You gotta keep at it. This is mine. Do you want to get in too, Shane? Don't stop, don't stop. We need to write the best thing. Whoops. Oh! Now let's go to. Yeah, that's. Oi. Oh, I <laughs> 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 Painfully. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, you took the piece off. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, do the spin. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some here. Got some. Yeah, your disco moves on. Wait. Oh, yeah, look at this. So good. Chow, chow, chow. <laughs> good work, mate. Yeah, it's right on the fire. Start making a little quiet. Because you, what's really, really important is that you turn this into a big hot coal. Okay, is everyone, does that make sense? Yeah. So if it's a big hollow, can you pass yeah. me the bird's nest again or did you fix it up? It's been fixed. It's been fixed. <laughs> so bird's nest, it's just gonna blow through and go out. You want it to be firm, firm like that, and then pinch it there, and then keep feeding it, feeding it, feeding it, and then figure eight's body roll. Right and all in that order, otherwise it stuffs yeah, it up, exactly. right? Yeah. I'm gonna pull it over. 
like that and just gonna keep that going so I'm just working on Nick's string here because you're gonna lay this across there like that you got your moustache you're gonna get your other moustache you're gonna go one for one nailing it <laughs> expert that stuff point. <laughs> I swear everyone got in. Just <laughs> <laughs> too much. It's just, it's just too much. I know what I'm gonna be doing next Friday night. Yeah. Come over everybody. We got yeah. We got some games to play, folks. <laughs> well, let me see how bad it looks. Oh, okay, it doesn't look terrible. No, yours looks pretty good. It's better when you when you keep pulling the ends up yeah. to tighten it up. I think that's strong too. That's not a weak point where you slice it. Right. Question. Where I've joined and I've got bits sticking out, does that mean it's... Okay, so it's about 7... Sorry. 7.45. And we're just going to break for chow and then we go back up at about 8.30. And then we'll do a little bit more. We just finished up with tracking and um yeah man absolutely amazing i mean especially for the hunting component you know because i'm trying to get into the hunting the the tracking and the trapping sorry yeah the tra the tracking tracking trapping yeah the tracking is is absolutely amazing um so really really cool stuff great fundamentals and then we played you know three or four games where you get to put some of the stuff in practice and and it's phenomenal i think what you what your mind tells you versus what's actually happening and how you really got to start you know using all of your different senses and things like that but man really really cool um yeah i'll just quickly show you while i'm here i started setting the tent up so the tent's laid out i didn't finish tightening the pegs and everything down because i ran out of time i have to make some more pegs but i'll make a couple more pegs and then i'll snug the lines up so i've got the bivy sack down below and then i just have the mattress i'll tuck the mattress mattress in and then I'll I have a sleeping bag as well, but I don't even know. I mean, it's quite warm. I don't think I'll need the sleeping bag for the night. But anyway, that's the setup. So definitely a huge departure from the tent, right? You know, you can you can see I've got like some sort of handmade handmade pegs and things like that. And um, yeah, definitely much. De definitely really drop the you know amount of gear that I'm carrying and really trying to start working on this bushcraft. Um, Depending upon how I go tonight, I, I kind of wanted to have a crack at making a chair and see if I can, you know, fashion up a chair. But I want to kind of do just a few bushcrafty... Oh, sorry, the other thing we did was making rope. So sorry, we made rope, rope, then we did some trap, tracking and trapping. Sorry, we made rope and then we did tracking. Um, yeah, anyway. So there's just like, there's so much information, ton of notes and everything. It's really, really good but it's gonna take a little while to sink in. So yeah, we, we made some rope, which is really, really cool. So I'll put some footage into that. And um, out of the Gaimia, Gaimia plant, yeah, which is cool. And sort of how to prep all that, you know, kind of running the leaves over the fire and stuff, which was really cool. And then we got into the tracking and the tracking was quite in depth. Normally this course doesn't go in to that much detail, but we went into a fair bit of detail. So anyway, yeah, back to the tent and the setup. I'm trying to do as much bushcraft as I can and um, yeah like even tonight I, I changed the cooking I did bring a steak for tonight I brought a titanium pot obviously not the most ideal thing for cooking but what I and it has a bail handle so what I was actually hoping to achieve with this what I want to try is I want to practice making um, like either a tripod or you know one of those like swing arms to actually set the bail handle up boil water for tea and coffee and then also cook and stuff like that. I don't think cooking a steak is going to be great on the in the titanium pot because I know it gets quite hot. But anyway, it's more about like I absolutely suck at all this bushcraft. There's no question about it. I'm brand new. But it's amazing. Like the moment you like you set your mind on doing something and you know like coming out here and doing like all the, the plant knowledge, the medicinal edible plants and doing all this stuff you realize how far away from the experts you are, but then at the same time, you get a very, very small handhold on saying like three or four, like my, my goal for this course was to have sort of five or six plants 
that I could reliably either identify and eat or use for some basic medicinal um, needs. And so, yeah, I feel just after the first half day, I feel pretty comfortable with that. But the point is, it's just a hand, it's a toe hold, it's a hand hold, it's a finger hold on trying to build on an entire body of knowledge that a lot of these people have done literally their whole entire life. I mean, I've been doing this for about two weeks. You know, I mean, the hunt, the hunting, you know, just learning how to shoot a bow. But the point is, I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you were to sit back and look at all the information that's required, you could easily get discouraged and say, man, this stuff's too hard. But I think if you approach it and say, look, I'm just gonna take one bite of this apple. I, I'm not gonna know every animal. I'm not gonna know every animal track. I'm not gonna know every aspect of tracking. I'm not gonna know a hundred plants. But man, if I can learn one plant, if I can learn how to do, you know, make, like for me, understanding the different ways to notch the tent poles and the different poles, like that's a, that's a cool thing. Learning how to use the ax, getting comfortable with the knife, learning the correct ways to use the knife. I mean, I think it's, it's really, really cool when you just sort of say, look, there's one or two things that I can kind of start with and build up to. Don't, you know, don't get overwhelmed. Anyway, it's quite easy to get overwhelmed, but um, yeah, that's what we're up to. So I'm going to make some chow. I got to tighten up the tent a little bit, get my bed and everything set up because it's going to be getting dark soon. And then we'll head back up for the second part of the day. Anyway, absolutely amazing day one. And you can see it's a pretty full on day, but I think Jake has got a really, really well run program. I mean, there's so much knowledge, you know, that, and, and the, the stories are really helpful as well. The application of the knowledge throughout the stories and stuff is really, really cool. So guys, yeah, day one, I'm absolutely chuffed. I'm really, really enjoying myself, having a great time. And my knowledge is, um, is building. So anyway, we'll see how we go. So I just wanted to eat before I go in because I'm starving. I didn't basically have any lunch today. So actually I didn't eat today. Yeah, I had a carrot. I had a carrot all day. So yeah, I'm pretty hungry. So I'm going to see how this goes. The jet boil, because of the heat, it obviously doesn't cook things very well. And obviously I'm using the titanium pot. Anyway, you got to do what you got to do. But I've got this little stick here and then I can, if I had more time, I would have fashioned it up a little bit better. But I can jam another stick in there to raise it up. Uh, but we'll see how we go. Like how bad can it be?